welcome to another episode of Extinct Breaks Originals! And for this special episode, we will be featuring the LEGO costume Extinct Breaks exclusives, Synthetosaurus! But before we head on with this feature video, I'd like to say thanks to youtube.com audio library for this awesome background music. Please also like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. To be able to support my channel, please do not skip on all the ads on all my videos. Thanks everyone! You may also follow me on all my social media platforms we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and also Leica. There I will be posting some of my exclusive photos as well as videos as well. Short clips guys! And here are the guests PC contest winners! Let's start with the lucky picks, shall we? Suzanne Jimenez, Ellie Jordan Korea, Jummy Core, Lavinia Thompson, Miles Philip, the GCL, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Big Old Waldron, Ethan Wilder, and Glitch Bunny Gaming. Congratulations, everyone, and now for our top 10 winners Maxim Pascal, Mr. T Rex, Alucard. Mechanic Tiger Pussies. Jack Bastic Revenue Money Amar Zaki Peach Maximum Power yeah. And Golden yeah. Tower Congratulations everyone and I'll see you on the next Nasty Species Contest! And for you to be able to join this contest, just click on the Extinct Bricks icon and it will lead you to the Extinct Bricks homepage. And in the homepage, just click on that community link and you'll see there all my posts. It's a weird looking antelope. <laughs> Well, let's move on to the making of the Synthetosaurus. Now, the Synthetosaurus is actually based off from this little pony here. I know it's really cute, but I wanted to make one. So, I made several modifications to the face as well as the angle of the neck. I also included that typical horn on its nose. Then, I base coated it with gray of course and then move on with the paint. It's just simple, I used white for most of the colors of the underbelly as well as that of the face. After the white paint is dried, I moved on with the black paints. I'm using this particular photo for the reference of this one. I'm also using the Gemspock or the South African Oryx as a reference for this one. I think the colors on that particular animal is really impressive. The blacks with the tones of grays on the back and also the white is really good. Moving on with the painting, you can see here that I'm already half done with the face. So you can see it's very similar to the RX. Now it's time for me to finish up with this paint with coloring of the back. Now you can see here that it's also gray but I wanted it to have a little bit brown to it so I mixed a little bit of brown as well as yellows to the gray. And after drying, this is how it looks like. And that's it for the making of the Synthosaurus. Now it's time for us to move on with the next portion of this video. It's the closer look. So hello again guys, it's been so long since I wanted to uh, make this particular costume, the Synthetosaurus, because ever since I saw it in the Jurassic World the game, I think it's such a weird creature but a really graceful one. If I had a lot of base figures for this, I'd make a whole herd of this one. The Synthetosaurus is actually a prehistoric antelope and it's actually based off from this particular photo. Well, Mario will be coming back later for some size comparisons, but for now, let us proceed with the closer look. And on closer inspection, you can see that it has this one stud on the back. It has this uh, line or stripe going from its head 
to where it is back until it's tail. It also has this fork or tuning fork on its um, snout or nose and two horns on the top of its head. They say that these horns on the top of its head is actually similar to that of the giraffe but since it is an antelope, I think it's more of a horn uh, or keratin horn rather than giraffe ossicorns. As I've mentioned earlier, the overall body scheme and painting is actually based off from the gangstock. It also has several stud receivers on the bottom of its hooves, so it can be attached to a base plate. Let's get one here. And let's try it. Like so. So it can actually stand on several steep uh, mounting ranges. <laughs> well, that is it for our closer look on the Sintaltasaurus. Let us now move on with the next portion of this video, size comparisons. And of course, with size comparisons, we'll be first comparing it with the uh, minute figure here, which is Moira. The Sintaltasaurus is actually a relatively small antelope. And comparing it with Moira here, I think it's just about the right size and proportion to that of the real Synthetosaurus. This creature is actually looking like a big goat with a fork on its nose. <laughs> well, Moira, say goodbye to the Synthetosaurus for now, and we'll have the other creatures for size comparisons. First, let's have the Extinct Rick Squaga. Now, the Extinct Rick Squaga is actually similar to that of the modern day zebra. Only its colors are very different. It's a stripe of brown and white. Or a stripe of white and brown. I don't know. <laughs> Size-wise, I think both are the same or actual size indeed. Compared to a minifigure. Next in the size comparisons would be this Extinct Rick Sibotherium. The Sibotherium is actually looking like that of the giraffe but it is more heavy built than that of the giraffe. It is like three times larger and three times uh, heavier than that of the modern day giraffe. It has a shorter neck but the muscles and also the bulkiness of this creature is actually two times or three times of it. It also has ossicones on its head very similar to that of the giraffe but more elaborate. If you would notice, this particular creature is actually based off from the uh, Okapi, which is also a cousin of that of the giraffe. And that's it for our Sibetherium. Let's move on to the next comparison. This is Extinct Bricks Smilodon. Now, this Smilodon is actually large for its size, but nonetheless, it really looks really fearsome. I would imagine that the Smilodon would hunt these particular antelopes and would be one of its snacks. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor Synthetosaurus. Well, I think that Synthetosaurus is actually made for, you know, galloping and also fast runs. Very similar to that of the modern day antelopes, such as that of the Gensbach. Well, let's move on to the last one. This is the Extinct Bridge Woolly Rhinoceros. The Woolly Rhinoceros, or also known as the Saludonta, is actually uh, one of the larger prehistoric rhinoceroses of all time. I think the largest one is the Elasmotherium. Comparing it by size, you can see that definitely this rhinoceros is a lot bigger than that of the Synthetosaurus. Well, let's move on with this PC roll call. But before we do that, if you do have other comments or other suggestions of species that you'd like to see next on Extinct Breaks, don't be shy and list them down in the comments below. Moira would also like to say that all of these creatures that you see here are already in the Extinct Breaks playlist. So if you haven't seen them yet, please do check them out. Let's start the roll call. Silodonta. Smilodon. Stingbridge Sivatherium, the Quagga, and of course the start of the show here, Synthetosaurus. I really enjoyed making this really cute antelope. Well, the video is about to end so it's time for us to have some last looks. 
The etymology of the names in Tatusaurus is not so clear, but I think it is based off from the two Greek words syntheticus and keras meaning putting together and horn, respectively. Thus, it is actually known as the branching horn. It lived in the late Miocene period around 10.6 to 5.3 million years ago and it is part of the Arteodictyla family. It can grow to a length of 6.7 feet, a height of 3.6 feet, and a weight of 300 kilograms. And thank you Moira for keeping me company. Thanks everyone and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't also forget that our babies Moira and Asher has their own vlog now, The Adventures of Moira and Asher. Please watch their videos and support their channel as well by subscribing. And as we always would say, let your inner dino brick roll!